Greetings YouTube, Fuzzfinger here and the plan today is to take down the infamous Behemoth King. Stay tuned. The Behemoth King is an elite hunt, meaning you're going to want to speak to Mont Blanc in order to pick it up. So we'll tell him we'll go and speak to the petitioner, pretty much the same old stuff as we're used to by this point. So this hunt is quite a challenging one. The mark is level 70 and has over a million and 500,000 hit points. So don't just go waltzing into this willy nilly. Okay, so there's our petitioner. Thank you very much, Mont Blanc. Appreciate the heads up. And we'll just have a wee look on the clan primer at the particular hunt so you know where it is. So it's number 41 in my log. And it might be number 42 in yours if you've uh, not seen it on 41. And there's the petitioner once more. So the hunt is called Truth Shrouded in Mist. Let's go and get it sorted, shall we? So as we enter Old Town, we're going to want to enter then into Old Dallin's place. Which is where the petitioner can be found. And it, uh, the petitioner's name is Cockmean or something along those lines, but I'm not sure if the name comes up immediately or if you have to speak to the people first. Oh, there we go, look, it comes up immediately, Cockmean. Have you come about the Behemoth King Hunts? I was starting to think that no one would pay my petition any mind. I don't have much to offer in way of bounty. I'm being upfront about that. I hope that won't stop you. What do you say? Will you go on the hunt? Of course we will. Thanks for hearing me out. Now where to begin? I heard a legend at Burr Omasis, a legend of an untrodden snow covered plain nestled deep in a treacherous wood. The legend holds that the gods sent a creature called the Behemoth King to this plain to watch over its lesser brothers. But if this plain is really untrodden, how does anyone know it exists? How could the legend be true? Is the legend no more than a fairy tale? Is this plain really untrodden? I mean, to find out once and for all. If you can find proof that the legend is true, I'll tell you how it ends. Do what you must, only discover the truth. And we accept the hunt. So as you might have gathered by some of that dialogue or monologue there from the chap who gave us the quest, it's not gonna be easy in order to find the Behemoth King himself. It's quite an elusive enemy, it's gotta be said. So we're going to begin by making our way out of Rabanaster, and we're going to head over to the Feywood. So teleport over to Gunnavagum, and then you can make your way to the Feywood from there, and that's the best way to do it because the area that we want to fight the Behemoth King is actually the very first area that we make our way into. I believe it's the first area uh, from Gunnavagum in Feywood. Anyway, I'll just check. It's the Edge of Reason, which is what we want to find. Okay, and so the Behemoth King can spawn in this area, but he will not spawn until you've defeated all the other enemies. So you need to run around killing everything, and I do mean everything, which can be a bit of a pain, sadly, because the mist can make things difficult to see. And he won't spawn once you've killed everything, <laughs> despite what I just said, because you need to actually enter into the area to the, uh, you know, to the next area in order to kill everything there as well. And only once you've killed everything in both of these areas is the Behemoth King likely to spawn. But that becomes tricky because enemies themselves like to respawn and while there's any enemies up in either of these areas, the Behemoth King is not going to show his face. So all you can literally do is just keep exploring this place, making your way around, killing everything that stands in your way. Don't miss any enemy. Just see if there's anything caught. Uh, else hiding around here. There's bound to be some stuff in the southeastern section. Of course there is. There's lots to kill still. And only once you've killed everything will he show his ugly features. So we'll just make our way around the south section here. You might want to go around the edges first. Just clearing everything off. And then do a loop around the middle. But maybe a wide loop. And then once you finish that loop, do a slightly narrower loop until you're confident that everything is taken care of. But as you can see, these enemies spawn absolutely everywhere. 
So I'm just going to skip ahead now. And do the same in this next area. Then the ice field of clear sight. And once all the enemies are cleared out of that. Then just head back into the previous area. Double check if any other enemies are around the place. And if they're not. Then with any luck the behemoth king should show up. Although at the moment he's not doing so. He would appear somewhere around the central area of this place. Aha! Ha 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 So I couldn't uh, probably laugh any worse than that, could I? So what we're going to do here is throw the thief's cuffs onto our good friend Balthea at this point. And set up his gambit for stealing. And hopefully we'll get something nice. And we're also going to go ahead with Ash. And she can cast Decoy and Bravery on our good friend Balthea. And she can also shout and protect the party, something I do recommend. And this, oh, we've got a Ringworm Scale, fair enough. So we're going to go ahead and disable Steel at that point. Now, it should be worth noting that this guy, as I mentioned at the start of the video, is quite a pain because he's level 70 and has 1.6 million health. So, yeah, that's going to take a bit of time to defeat. What I'm going to try and do here is equip the Berserker Bracers on Balthea so that we can hopefully do a little bit more damage. In fact, forget the Berserker Bracers, something that would be even better than those is the... So I was reading the text message then. Um, dum, 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 dum. Where is it? I've gone past it. Ah! Stuff that makes you do lots of attacks. Genji gloves. That's it. That's what we want. So we'll try and move around here. At your best. Oh dear, Balthea kind of got killed. Just speed things up as such. Holy's not very pleasant, as you might guess. In fact, Brave is probably not going to be a good thing to keep on to Balthea. For the simple reason that he's just dying so quickly. So it seems pretty pointless. So we'll turn Balthea's... Uh, no, not Balthea. Ashes. Bravery off. And what we might... I'll probably keep Decoy on. Uh, I think I haven't tried yet. Maybe this is worth a, worth a whiz. Is throwing a remedy on this guy. I can't remember off the top of my head if he is going to be uh, susceptible to status ailments. But there's only one way to find out. And that's to actually test it out. So we gave that to Pinello. So we go to items. And with this item I'm using, all the status ailments uh, have the reverse effect. So we're going to go into foes actually. Throw a remedy on. And that's just cured up. Right now he's immune to physical damage. Okay, he's pretty much immune to all the status ailments. So we want to go straight ahead with hitting him with scathe and things of that particular nature. So Panella, if you could be kind enough to leave your... No idea what I was waffling on about then, but I'm giving Balthea the bubble belt because that double health is hopefully going to help him to survive just a little bit longer. And maybe if he does, it might even be worth keeping bravery on him at that point. But we'll see how we get on, shall we? Let's uh, get him back to life. And uh, red ass, it's time for you to actually start doing stuff, my friend. I know it's uh, something you don't like doing, a bit of work, but it is time. And you can even heal as well. Look at that. Might as well get our money's worth out of this fella. Since he's in our party right now. And while he's immune to physical attacks. Pinello is going to be there to cascade. So basically then this guy goes immune to physical attacks. And magics. Uh, consecutively. He swaps between the two of them. So you'll want to go ahead and. Make sure that you are hitting him with the right attacks each time. So it's probably pointless casting scathe on him at this point. But I just want to make sure we have got protect up. Yes, we have. But, oh, no, we haven't. Oh, yeah, we have Protect is up, uh, which is obviously very, very, very important, it's got to be said. Is there any other buffs we can do to Balthea? Um, probably not, to tell you the truth. Just bravery. 
Maybe it is worth keeping Ravy on him when he's at max health, 9999. He shouldn't generally die in a single hit at that point. And I also want to make sure that Panello is actually doing her job in healing. Yes, she is. Okay. I'll let her off then. Thought she might have been skyping a bit, but she wasn't. So he's no longer immune to physical damage. That means we'll lay on a little bit more damage. I'm not using the Genji gloves, as I've just said, since it's important to keep Balthea's health up, if at all possible. And one thing that might be worth doing, I don't know, but we'll see how we get on. It's a Hastagar mode, or Hastagar if you want to just use the spell. Uh, oh, is Hastagar any work on? Oh no, yeah, it's all characters, but let's just move a little bit close before we do cast that, unless we don't get everyone in the range. Dum -de -dum -de -dum. So now, please don't. Oh boy, oh boy, it's all going wrong. Okay, let's get some Kronos Tears going around here. Redass, I need you to start casting Kronos Tears. Where's my Kronos Tears? Please tell me I've got some Kronos Tears. Yeah, I've got 99 of them. Or you could just die, Redass. No, no, he's, he's surviving. That's good. That's what I like to see. Okay. So we are doing damage to this guy. 1.6... Sorry, 1,668,491 health. So, as you can see, it is going down slowly but surely. Um, one thing that would be useful if you've got it is Wither. But I don't, since I don't actually have... Uh, that technique yet because we haven't been to that part of the game at this point and we are going to set up something to remove stop since it's annoying me quite frankly so we'll go ahead and go over here dum de dum de dum de dum chronos tia keep it on ally any that way i'll cast it on slow or stop speed things up a bit so Ash isn't actually casting Kronos here because she's trying to do everything else. She wants to seem to cast Decoy over and over and over and over. Let's just move that above. That's more like it. That's it. How much damage are we doing to this guy now? A little. Slowly but surely, he's going down. With our buffs and everything else. Go on, don't let Balthia die, that's better. That's more like it. Is there anything else I can do to boost his defence a little bit? Because, boy, is this guy uh, hitting hard. We could go ahead and give him a shield, actually. I'm trying to think if that's really worth it, though. Uh, what weapon would I have to give him a Francisca, probably? It's a big drop in damage, unfortunately. If we're going to do that, why don't we just bring Varney? No, we don't need to bring Varney with me messing around with others. Let's just try giving him a tank and board. Or shield and board. No, sword and board. That's what I'm after. Uh, who's using my Gendarm? I want my Gendarm back. Ash is using the Gendarm. <sighs> it's never easy, is it? It's never simple. So I've thrown Gendarm onto Balthier, so yes, he's going to be doing less damage, but the plan now is that he's actually going to be taking a lot less damage, since Gendarm is such a fantastic ability, or so a fantastic item. Let's try and bring him away from the rest of the party here. Red Ass, I don't really care about me. Red Ass is a nobody, really, in terms of his usefulness. Hey, Mr. Behemoth King, have you no idea what it means to tank and to attack a tank? Look at this now, he's not taking any damage, but he's not actually taking the attention of the enemy either. Right then, let me just check what Ash is actually playing at here. So she's definitely got decoy. I advertise. Okay, it's better now. We've got uh, aggro. And how much damage are we doing? We're more than halfway through the encounter now. So just make sure you alternate between your 
physical and magical damages. And even with the Gendarm shield, we are taking a fair bit of damage here on Balthia. So it's nice to see that the uh, Bubble Belt is actually having a good effect here. And keeping our health maxed out. I think if we had less than maximum health, this fight would just be one-shotting us too quickly. Right, we need to just watch out for uh, MP values at this point. So we'll go ahead and cast a high ether onto Ash. Where's that high? Oh, we did get the high ether off, okay. I think we'll get another one off on her just to be on the safe side. That's good. And now we'll put one onto Pinello as well. Thank you, Belfi. And we are doing damage to him. And we're just keeping that lure on to Balthia. So we've done about two thirds of his health at this point. Looks like we could die here if we don't get healed. So I'm guessing we're hitting him with scathe at this point. See, this physical damage wasn't doing anything, now it is. Don't neglect the healing. Who should I blame? The healers or the tank when we die? He's going down. He is going down slowly but surely. But my goodness, this is a uh, tough encounter. Oh, no. I've just thought of something. I'm supposed to be ordering a takeaway for my wife, for curry. And I forgot. I need to pause this. Otherwise, I'm going to get in trouble. Ah, oh, I'm back. Right then, so what... A Okay, we was taking down the Behemoth King, and he's almost done. So let's speed things up again. Dum -de -dum -de -dum. Once you've got a nice routine going, it's probably just, to be honest, about outlasting this guy. He likes to throw holy out by the looks of things. It's not very pleasant, is it? Still, I hope you don't do much to me with me again. Darm Shield. If you don't know how to get the Gendarm Shield, by the way, go ahead and check out my video playlist where I show you in one video exactly how to do just that. In fact, you can get as many as you want. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is going down with the healing? Ash, please. Come on. Sort yourself out. I want to go a little bit faster than that, please, with the healing, if you don't mind. Let's move Ash out of the way of White Breath. Since that's not a particularly pleasant ability by the sounds of it. Dum-de-dum. This is a real slog, this fight, isn't it? Well, just wait until you face... Yes, or whatever his name is later. 50-odd million health. 50 times more than this guy. Therefore, the battle lasts about 50 times longer. Right, so, Balthy, if you would be ever so kind as to throw some more high ethers around the place. Yes, we have charge. But charge interrupts our healing. This guy is almost dead now. Almost dead. He's got an inkling of health left. And he's immune to physical damage, so it's time for you to start scathing, please, for now. If you'd be so kind as to do so. Hey, go after Ash. Brilliant idea. Who's dead next? Ash again. Wonderful. It's like death, 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 death. I reckon he's probably got less than 50k, no, less than 100k health. 50k is probably a little bit ambitious, it's got to be said. Stop casting things on my other party members. Probably a good idea to equip a power arm it. I believe that bit of events stop, but I don't want to get rid of that bubble belt. Dum -de dum Maybe Redas here. Or anybody. Wow, this is uh, going a little bit wrong at the moment. 
Uh, it's all okay. We're back in action now. Right, Balf, I know this guy's nearly dead, but you need to keep up on the high ether action because Canelo and Ash are basically our lifeline during this encounter. That's it, and one onto Ash, please. Okay, and now hopefully let's see if that's enough to take this guy down once and for all. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I barely even see a health on his health bar. But he's still going to last long enough to kill our Balf there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, we've done it. He is down. And we get a silver trophy for that one. Lord of the Kings. Behemoth King has been vanquished. What a wonderful stuff. And we're right next to the... Uh, thingy Majig. The exit. Back we are at Cockmean then. So we'll speak to him. The Behemoth King, you defeated it. Then the legends were true. Incredible. There was one thing I didn't tell you before you left. A friend of mine had also gone searching for proof of the legend. But he never came back. I needed to know that he hadn't thrown his life away. Chasing after a child's crib tale. Ah, I did say I'd tell you how the legend ended, didn't I? And when the Watcher of the Deep Wood should fall, its slayer shall look to the stone-hewn worm and no joy. Though cold stone shall never stir again, a blow struck true by slayer's hand shall find warmth in the worm's elation. This is hardly enough to thank you for the trouble I've put you through, but I suppose it's better than nothing. And do we get an awesome reward? 250 kill, gill and two Bacchus wine. Uh, no. But that's not the end. Not quite yet. Yes, yes, we don't need to know all that again. Thank you very much. There's actually one more thing we can do. And we're going to head over to do this in Mount Baromasis. So meet me over there. Here then in Mount Baromasis, you want to head to the central section, which is called Temple Approach. And you can see that there's this worm snout here. So what we're going to do is with our party leader, and I, I don't actually know if it matters if it's your party leader or Vance, since he's the one that's here. Uh, but either way, just do it on both of them. We're going to remove the weapon so that we're unarmed. Okay, that's what we're going to do. It is Penella that's our party leader, isn't it? Yes, so then we're going to go worm snout and strike it. But make sure you're unarmed. I'm guessing it's Vance by the looks of it, not your party leader. And then you can loot 500,000 gil and the Rod of Faith. So this is available only after finishing the Behemoth King Hunt. And that's your true reward for this encounter. Let's go ahead now before we do anything else. And uh, sort out our gear. But I'm going to finish things off here for today then folks. So hopefully this video has been helpful. And it's been pretty awesome taking down the Behemoth King. Even though he was a bit of a grind wasn't he let's be honest. But he's done now. So another hunt to tick off the list as they say. Thanks for sticking around then guys and for joining me in today's episode and I'll see you soon for more FF12. Take care.